live. Christmas live. I've had so many of your blooming drinks. I've got to pieces now. It is officially the season to be jolly, and we are being jolly. And with only four days left, what better excuse do we need than to have a cocktail, whether it's shaken or stirred? And who better to. Hello, I haven't seen you for Hi, ages. Jen. How are well, you? You keep coming back to my bar. Yeah, I do, <laughs> darling. Right, cocktails. Right, yeah, well, it's actually it's a cocktail, but it's more of the holiday punch. Now, we all know about eggnogs, very traditional, come from the old bishops and negus and noggins from many years ago with spice tails and eggs. But the, the eggnog, the difference between this and the eggnog is the eggnog uses milk and cream. This one uses spice and water. This is a Tom and Jerry. This goes back to about 1870. Jerry Thomas, the guy who wrote the first bartending book, and it's an anagram of his name. Jerry Thomas, Tom and Jerry. His two favourite spirits of the day, rum, brandy. Brilliant. Now, there is a bit of a folk, you know, tale in bar folklore that was this drink that got the name of the cartoon characters, famous Tom and Jerry. But some people say, no, it was Pierce Egan's play, A Life in London, based on um, uh, Corinthian Tom and Jerry Hawthorne, who were brawling, drinking womanizers. And that's a play from the 1830s. But people in the bar industry, as I did as well, like this story because just like the drink and just like the cartoon characters, it makes you feel good. You know? Give me it. What then. I like Fantastic. about this story, as quickly as Tom and Jerry, is because during now, when Prohibition kicked in around 1920, for 13 years, speakeasies were serving wintertime between Thanksgiving all, all up to the New Year's Day, they would serve Tom and Jerry punches. Right. So federal agents were playing a game of cat and mouse with the bootleggers and gangsters. Ah! And that's why I believe it's Tom and well, Jerry. Well, listen, make it. Right, so we've got, we've got some egg yolk. Right. We've got six eggs separated. Yeah. The whites have been yeah. whisked up. So what I've got here is some cream of tartar and some caster sugar. In there, whisked it. Look at you doing do meringue, because the, that, the, the tartar's going to help stabilise the sugar to hold it, because you have to make a batter, but you need to actually preserve it as well. Okay. So with the egg yolks, they're whisked up. You're going to sweeten the egg yolk with just vanilla syrup. Ooh. Here we see it. Then you're going to add some rum. And some rum? rum. Um, and then Ooh. we've got the spice. This is to serve six people. Go on. So here we've got some ground allspice Lovely. and some ground clove. I just have to tell you while he's mixing this together that our editor, Nikki Cooper, when I see her legs coming down, we call her Tom and Jerry, you never see her face. She's got the broom if I do it wrong. Oh, she's... Sorry. Now, I'm going to just get some of this into here. You've got to fold it in and make it like a batter, basically. This is, for, this, this is a traditional recipe from his first uh, book that he done in 1862. Do you, do you people buy tickets to come and hear you talk about cocktails? They do when I do the exhibitions at different seminars around How the world. How much do you charge a ticket? Oof, Jen. Hey. It's free as long as they, they buy paper. me. As long as they buy me a drink. Just say, they paper the house. <laughs> Nobody's ever paid for them since he's been around. So there right, we go. Come on. Right, we've got like a batter here. Here we go. So now we're getting it ready. You see, the, the sweetness is there. There's a bit, it's been brought together. That's like a batter. Now, the weed's got rum in there because you can put it in the fridge and leave it set and because the eggs have been like, cooked in the alcohol. You've got, the, you've got the preservation of the 40% rum. So then we've got to add a little bit of rum in each glass. None ourselves. of the bit None more of rum. Because we've got that in there just, hot, just to, you know, okay. condition the eggs, if you like, because it is obviously raw eggs. Then we're going to have some cognac. We'll take that one off. Hold on. Okay. Okay, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Brian, I hope you're champing at the bit, my darling. It won't take long for me, lass. I'm fine. And then, All right. what we do here then, Jen, is we're going to take a couple of, for each one you want, a couple of good tablespoons of your batter. Right. That's all spice and sweet, and we'll put three in, you know, since uh, he's coming up to Christmas. Well, and yes, a little bit. And I'm, and I'm driving home, who cares? <laughs> and then we've just got to top off with some hot water. So not boiling, you want it warm water, but not to be boiling. Let it for a fuck, Let your nutmeg right, on top. Okay, of and finish. a little bit of a great... Nutmeg. Listen, I am not driving home. I have had too much to drink. Now that, as well as those two lovely characters, will put a smile on your face all over Christmas. That's a traditional Tom and Jerry. Oh, lovely. I'm taking it with me. You're not having it. It's mine. All oh, from cartoon characters to Goofy. Cartoon I'm not amused with that. It's interesting, of course, that, that, that Wayne kept talking about the batter that he was making, and we all know that Thanks. Yorkshire pudding's made with the batter, but it isn't quite like that. It's not. Taste it. It's that fabulous. Me, that's a lot of batter, is that? Lovely. Go on, get cooking, darling. Okay. What are you making? It's very simple. Oh. This. It'll be very quick, so don't worry about it. Yeah, make it quick for this all goes down. Hallelujah. Ahead. Isn't that oh. gorgeous? Oh, Excellent, sir. Just Excellent. a little bit of rum. Excuse me, I'll have that back. Right, okay. We're going to make some orange salad and brandy oh, snaps. Wow. Really very simple. Except, it's a simple method, except you just have to be careful with temperatures. First thing we need to do is we make uh, the, the, the actual apparel, the mixture for the uh, brandy snaps. I've got some unsalted butter in here, <laughs> melted. And so I'm going to put in that. Would you like to stir it, please? Yes. Uh, anti clockwise. Thank you, Mark. That's yeah. clockwise. Are you serious? No, I'm English. And yourself? That's so we've got some soft brown sugar in there. 
We have just got some uh, wonderful syrup in there. Do you need to turn the Golden heat on? syrup. No, it's fine, fine. We just melt it all together. It doesn't really need to heat at all. I have got about four tablespoons of orange juice. And then we're going to put into it some zest of orange. That gives it, if you don't put the orange in it, it's fine anyway, but this makes it obviously an orange brandy snap, which all marries together nicely. It's good production values. Don't look so bored. You're all right over there, excited. <laughs> now I'm you're not looking not bored. Yeah, Me she's bored. bored. Yeah. Smell this orange. She walked round the Almost oven. as strong as that rum. Okay, so nice orange zest Beautiful. in there. And then what we do is we take uh, some flour and the ginger. You have to bring it from the heat, please, just to make sure that's okay, right? And we just sieve that flour and ginger. I bet he's horrible to work with, don't you mm, think? Yeah. I think she's been horrible to work with. She's been working with me all day. She's had a good time. We'll just pass that through here. Do you, you always bring that spoon use back, your right digit? Do you want to mix it with a wooden spoon? Yes, now? please. Yes, I do. Yes, oh. please. Thank you. That's kind of okay, right? Lovely, okay. So we just stir that up there. Now, the trick with this, of course, I think, is to do it the day before. Of uh, course, uh, I forgot. I put the shape. It's getting a bit soft on the lights on here. Okay. So you just mix it up, beat it well, and use your muscles, girl, and then pour it into there. And the best is if you do it the day before, and it keeps for weeks, does this stuff. Oh, right. If you actually do it correctly, you'll find that you can like roll this. it. Roll it nice, it gets a lot more solid. This is quite sticky, but don't worry, if you're in a hurry, it's very quick to make. Now, can I bring that over here, please? I love having this assistant. Here. Can you get to that, please? What's her name? What? I don't know. It's her, the lady in the green sweater. Lovely girl. It's gonna go and take Mariah. Go yes. okay, Mariah well, Carey Elia. You need to have a greased baking, baking sheet or silicone paper or silicone sheet, but you need to have some non-stick situation. It's like wallpaper my mum had in our kitchen. Oh, so no. Your yeah. mother has silicone Orange on curtains. the wallpaper? She, when I was a kid, well, yeah. Really? Oh, dear. Uh, and then, of course, <laughs> you just roll them into uh, little bowl-sized shapes. The size is your, is up to you, OK? On to here. And then just press them down a little bit. Right. OK, and if it's not quite so sticky, it works a lot easier, but please don't worry about it. This will look rustic, will this? But do make sure, because they're going to expand, so you put four on here, OK? Right. Put them in the oven at 190 degrees for about eight minutes. Now, when they are ready, they will look similar to these, and I've made these quite thick. Mm -hmm. You can make them thinner, but they're not as easy to handle. So please, just so you make it easy. Now, once they've come out of the oven, they need to sit for a little moment, probably about a minute, because if you're not careful, it's hot sugar, it'll stick to your fingers and it will hurt you. And you don't really want to hurt yourself at all. Do you want to bring those over that we've made yes. already? Now, you can then mould them. You can serve them like this, let them go cold, fantastic, or you can mould them round a rolling pin round a wooden spoon handle. These are the old cream horn moulds. You, you won't remember. Do you remember cream horn moulds? Cream <laughs> horns? You remember, don't you? She said she'd know Lovely. She remember. Pastry round, puff pastry around here, bacon, then fill with cream You're saying jam. that anything that that Fantastic. is, is that, that shape you're going to Once they've been out the oven for a little while, oh. they can sit now so you can handle them. Turn them over, and all you do is just wrap it up like this, OK? Which is what we're going to ask you to do very shortly. And then let it sit. Just let it sit for a couple of moments and it's ready to go, OK? Yeah. We've got orange here. Yeah. We've just peeled it. We slice it into four nice Show me your slices. hands. Just show me your You've hands. You've seen my hands before. Oh, you know they're, they're like my lovely. father's hands. They go on there. Quickly, Probably. we'll just put this cream into here. And all I've got in here is whipped cream with some vanilla seeds and a little icing sugar. A typical creme chantilly. We can't blame the French for everything. And all we then do quickly it's, oh, look at this, what a wonderful assistant we've got here. Just pile it in there. We'll put three up for a portion. Put them on top there. Oh. oh that's oh. lovely. It's a little bit soft as a cream, but that's, your fact, that's how I prefer it, because it actually is so much nicer to eat. On it goes over the top of there. A wee bit of iced in sugar. And all you do is just... I'm, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Blimey, O'Reilly. <laughs> just round the outside like that. Over the top, that wonderful sweetness, and I promise you that when you do get around to touching those and eating them, you will love these orange cream brandy snaps. You can come in now. <laughs> <laughs> Melt the butter, sugar, syrup, orange juice and zest together and remove from the heat. Sift in the flour and ginger, stir well and allow to cool. Roll into small ball shapes, press onto a greased baking sheet well spaced apart and bake at 190 degrees Celsius for eight minutes. Remove from the oven and allow to cool slightly, then mould and leave for one and a half to two minutes. Skin the orange, cut into slices and lay on a plate. Whisk the sugar, vanilla seeds and cream and place into a piping bag. To serve, fill the cooled brandy snaps with cream and lay on top of the oranges. 
finish with a dusting of icing sugar. At the top of the show, we had beer that was 137 years old. At the end of the show, we've had a cocktail that is... 140 years 140 old. years old. And now we're going to eat a little <laughs> brandy snack created by a man. <laughs> 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 OK, go. This is a spoon dessert, is this? No, it's not. Oh, it's really, it's I'll do it again. Nice it's a, wait a minute. Mm. Wait. Mm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Your pack Troy and your oh, 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 oh. Mm. great crunch. It is. I know. I'm covered in gunk. What a fantastic! Literally. Thank you. Literally. Tell me why. Tell me why it's so good. Crunchy, creamy, yeah. zesty, sweet. Too crunchy. But it is quite simple if you just do it at home. It's, mm. really... it's so lovely. And what a lovely, lovely thing to learn how to do that simplicity itself. I like them thick. Hmm. Do you, pre you prefer them thin? No, I love them thick. You love them thick? I work with thick lots of them. Thick or thin? Thick. Are you a thick or thin man? Thick. I knew you were thick. <laughs> I mean, he walked into that one. That's all we have time for. Thanks to Brian Turner, Marie Elia and Wayne Collins. Join yeah. me for Good Food Live, Great Food Live tomorrow when Alex McKay makes a Christmas-inspired breakfast. Gino De Campo, salt baked Baramundi. Andrew Jeffer brings it on a fine selection of single malts. You lot are going to settle down and you're going to watch it to join us at 12.30. Thank <laughs> you.